Bon, if maybe with Wonga, he, he could have possibly gone on, you know, within that uh, thing because of his cleverness. Even the way he wrote, it was rock and roll, it was about women, the, the rock and roll life. But he certainly had a way with those words. And I think he, he's already laid down, you know, that mark on, the, you know, in his years with the band, you know. It's, uh, it's stuff like that. will be around for centuries. I think he's like Robbie Burns, you know, the Scottish poet. Everything was like Robbie Burns. His uniqueness in his own way. Uh, and he just he came out of a period that could have, he could come out today with those lyrics. You know, he'd be brilliant. You know what I mean? He had so, it was such a... He was so good at it. He's somewhat become, of a, uh, become a legend. That must have been very difficult for Brian in the early days. <laughs> Yeah, it still is occasionally for Brian, you know, that the question's still around, you know. Yeah, but he's dealt with it. He's, you know, I'd say that lesser men wouldn't be around if but Brian handles it, you know. He's a, a tough guy, strong guy, you know. He won't take no for an answer when uh, he knows he can do it. He knows he's got it in him. Uh, but sometimes it's hard for him, you know, if there's a bit of bad press on him or if they compare, because it's so long ago. And like I say, he's been in the band three times longer than uh, Bond was. <laughs> it won't go away. But we always had ambitions of getting Phil back, you know. It was just a matter of time for Phil. He just needed a, a time out thing, you know, to get, get back to his, his own life and everything. But he said he wanted back, you know, and it was just waiting for the moment. And uh, So we were just putting drummers in there, really, until we got him back, because he, he's as much... He is the real sound with the rest of the guys. It's the real deal, you know. Um, it still sounded like ACDC, but it just didn't have as much oomph under it. They called me up again, and... We go over and sit down after 12 years, and it's like I've been out five oh, minutes so. for a cup of tea. It's like I've been out for a packet of cigarettes, and that is absolutely true. We sat down, never heard the song. Dun, 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 you know. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, right, okay, this is it. And that's it, simple as that, you know. Because I, cause I, I love it, I love it, I love, you know, and it comes out the right way. The guys like the way it comes out, you know, technically. You know, I've got you know I've got quite a few problems as a drummer, but when it gets going and they, you know and you get some uh, some passion, then I you know then I sort of uh, I, I have my own expertise with that you know so that's about the only way I can defend the way I play drums. <laughs> well, I think you could become a little blase eh, with it because we've played together so long that you tend it's just there. We just don't even think about it. You know, it's just. We just help each other out, really, up there. You know what I mean? That's how we're playing, you know. I still, you know, it's like we look at each other, you know. He knows what I bring to the table, and I know what he brings, you know. So, you know, you know I still look to see, you know, like, I mean, even when I've worked with people, you know, good other people, uh, even like Mutt Lang, who's very prominent in the world of music as a producer and stuff. You know, even when he said to me, that's a great piece of guitar there, you know, I, I had to ask, I say, I'm not worried what he said, I'm worried what Malcolm says, you know. So, you know, if Malcolm went, yeah, that's good, you know, then I knew that there was something, something there. Because he knows your talent better. He's worked with you all the years, and he knows when you're, when you're faking it and when you're really doing it. And I, yeah, I mean, like I say, you, you forget, but I've, I've, when I listen back to some of the live stuff, you go, gee, some, I, cause I, sometimes you don't hear everything Angus is doing solo-wise and uh, from the volume on stage, you may not pick it up, but when you listen back later, you know, you go, geez, he's playing really, how could he do that with a white racket behind him at the time? Because you can't hear nothing, it's, but uh, no, nah, he's, he's, he's a hot player, you know, and, uh, I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of people, again, his Jews are yet to come, Angus. You know, they don't understand how good he really is on guitar. You know, there's some who do, but, you know what I mean, one day they'll, they'll find out, you know, they'll see it in its entirety, you know, and go, fuck, and he's been the best guitarist of them all, and that'll be true, you know. I mean, out of all these rock legends, so-called. <laughs> 
there's very few rock and roll bands. There's rock bands, there's sort of metal, there's whatever, but there's no rock and roll bands. There's the Stones in us. <laughs> and their, their sound's completely different to us. So we really aim, you know, in, a, in an area that's going back in time to, in, with the sounds, still what the old analogue sounds, you know. So we try to even keep that. And, uh, and the sounds are bigger than digital. Well, what's, you know? what's the difference between rock bands and rock and roll bands? <coughs> well, rock bands, rock bands don't really swing. Rock and roll has a swing, you know, like... Uh, Yeah, you've got your hi hats. You know, a lot of rocks not got that swing in the hi hat. It's more become stiff. They don't understand the feel, the movement. You know, the, the jungle of it all. It's it's a feeling. Like